America must win this war. Therefore, I will work, I will save, I will sacrifice, I will endure. I will fight cheerfully and do my utmost as if the issue of the whole struggle depended on me alone. I do not believe that any of us would exchange places with any other people or any other generation. The energy, the faith, the devotion which we bring to this endeavor will light our country and all who serve it. And the glow from that fire can truly light the world. And so, my fellow Americans, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. We shall never surrender. Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to the War Kitchen. It's been a while since we did an episode, so I thought today that we would talk about cucumbers. We had a lot of cucumbers come off the Victory Garden at once, so let's go over some quick recipes for cucumbers. When trying to eat uh, this many cucumbers at once uh, before they rot, really the best thing you can do is just eat them in slices. So, simple slices, fresh, pretty easy to do, not too bad. But since that gets kind of tedious after a while, another thing you can do is take the fresh slices and throw them in a water bottle and have cucumber water. Another pretty common way to eat a lot of fresh cucumber. Another thing you can do with fresh cucumber slices is simply uh, put them in a bowl with some vinegar and water. So I'm just going to take these cucumber slices, throw them in a bowl really quickly, and you can use uh, whatever vinegar you want technically, but apple cider vinegar is probably the best for it. So we're just going to add in a little bit, little bit of apple cider vinegar here. And we're going to go about half and half apple cider vinegar and half water just to kind of dilute it down so it's not so strong. Okay, adding in our water. And you can stop there if you like, but usually what's best is to add in a little bit of a little bit of fresh ground salt and a little bit of pepper as well. Stir everything up and you can serve this fresh as kind of like a light salad for like a lunch or something. Up next is something a little bit more substantial but still quite easy and that is the famous cucumber sandwich. So this could not be easier. Really what you're going to want to do is just take your cucumber and have a potato peeler and you can make nice thin slices of cucumber. Uh, you can make them as thin or as thick as you want, but usually you want them just slightly translucent. Um, that makes the best sandwiches that way. Really nice uh, and airy. So once you've got your uh, really thin slices of cucumber, you can move to the filling. Alright, so for the filling, the main ingredient is one 8-ounce package of cream cheese that has been softened to room temperature to make it easier to work with. We're also going to need one teaspoon of dried dill or dill weed. We'll also need one teaspoon of chives, two tablespoons of mayonnaise, whatever mayonnaise you can find, and of course salt and pepper to taste. Another optional ingredient is one teaspoon of lemon juice. You can use either fresh or concentrated. Uh, this is again optional, but it makes it a little bit easier to spread uh, on the bread later. So we'll just go ahead and add about a teaspoon-ish of lemon juice. Make sure to stir everything up nice and thoroughly, eliminating as many clumps as you can. You don't really want any uh, clumps of cream cheese in the final product. You want a nice, smooth filling. All right, once you've got your sandwich filling all ready to go, it's pretty easy. All you got to do is put it on some sandwich bread. Nice thin layer will do. You don't need to overdo it too much. Cucumber sandwiches are usually a, a light and airy food anyway, so... Using too much is kind of goes against the theme. Then you can spread your cucumber slices however they will, they'll fit uh, on the bread, just like that. Usually a really thin layer, but if you're feeling spicy, you can go another layer. There we go, just like that. Sandwich bread on top, and there's your cucumber sandwich. Depending on how many cucumber sandwiches you wanted to make, you might have a lot of this filling left over. So you can either make more cucumber sandwiches, or you can make other different kinds of sandwiches depending on what you have in your garden. So for instance, another common pairing uh, with this is 
carrot. So uh, if you've got some early carrots coming off uh, the garden this time of year, what you can do is make some carrot sandwiches. For the carrot sandwiches, the recipe is exactly the same as the cucumber, just swapping out for carrots. So we're using some uh, baby carrots we've gotten here from the garden. Uh, you can use a cheese grater if you want to have shredded carrot, but I think these uh, slices of baby carrot using the potato peeler is uh, works quite well as, as well. So again, recipe is exactly the same. Take your bread, your sandwich filling. Make sure to not use too much, but just enough to cover the bread, really. And then we can put our slices of carrot on, making sure to get them all nice and even all over the bread. So there you go, bread on top, and there you go. You have a nice cucumber and carrot sandwiches. If you wanted to get fancy, you could do the traditional way and remove the crust from both of these and serve them that way. But if you don't like to be wasteful and you just want to uh, keep things simple, you can leave the crust on. There's no problem with doing that. And last but not least is pickles. So this is the most obvious use for extra cucumbers. And today we're not really going to do the traditional pressure canning way of making pickles. Uh, this is really just kind of a quick and dirty way, if you don't really want to put a whole lot of effort into it, uh, to make some fresh pickles. So the first one we're going to start with is the bread and butter variety. For both of these recipes, we prefer to make these up fresh because uh, in kind of like uh, the opposite to normal traditional pickles, these uh, more non-pressure canned pickles taste better fresh, right? So we tend to do small batches, one cucumber or two cucumbers at a time. You don't have to do a whole batch, right? And besides, uh, since we're not pressure canning these, we're just storing them in uh, canning jars in the fridge. They're going to last about two weeks before they, start, uh, before they start going bad. So let's get our ingredients together. The first ingredient is obviously cucumber slices. You can slice these however you want. For the bread and butter variety, I tend to tend to do them uh, perpendicular like normal uh, cucumber slices. But a very important thing to remember is when you're doing this uh, variety is to remove the ends and discard them. Uh, you can eat them fresh, but the, uh, there's something about the chemistry with uh, how cucumbers work is that the, the ends cause them to spoil faster. Now there are a lot of ways to skin the cat when it comes to making pickles. Uh, this is just one way of literally hundreds of different ways to make them. Uh, but they all obviously are going to be using cucumber slices. And we're also going to be adding in some distilled white vinegar. Again, you can use whatever vinegar you want, but this is highly recommended. <laughs> we're going to be adding in one half cup distilled white vinegar. Again, you can use whatever vinegar you want, but the distilled white vinegar works uh, the best. Next is two thirds of a cup of white sugar. So the final ingredients are highly uh, modifiable if you want. Uh, for instance, we're going with our own homemade celery salt. So just kind of a pinch of that or one eighth of a teaspoon. Uh, really, you can just kind of eyeball that. You can use dried celery. You can have salt separately, however you wanted to do it. it doesn't really matter. Next, we're going with some uh, homemade minced garlic from the Victory Garden last year. Again, using just one eighth of a teaspoon of that. Again, if you're using dried garlic, you can certainly do that instead of the minced garlic. Uh, just make sure to reduce the amount of garlic you use to, to kind of whatever your taste is. Because dried ingredients tend to be stronger than fresh or minced ingredients. Next, this recipe calls for one quarter of a teaspoon of mustard seed, but I don't have mustard seed. All we have is mustard powder, so we're going to go with slightly less than a quarter of a teaspoon, just, to, just a hair off the top of that. Uh, quarter teaspoon measuring spoon for that. One quarter teaspoon of turmeric powder. And this recipe also calls for uh, adding some onion slices to this if you wish. Uh, I don't have any from the garden this year, so I'm just going to leave it out and just make this uh, as simple as possible. But you can add that in if you like. Alright, so once we've got all of our ingredients together, we're just going to mix it up, make sure everything is, is well mixed, uh, make sure the sugar is nice and dissolved as best you can. And then we're going to throw this entire mixture in the microwave for seven to eight minutes, depending on how big your cucumbers are. I know I was very skeptical myself about microwaving pickles, but it actually turned out surprisingly well. Make sure, though, to stir your cucumbers about halfway through or once every couple of minutes just so that they don't burn and so that uh, each of these uh, cucumbers remains kind of submerged in this mixture here. Once you're done microwaving it, uh, it should look like pickles. So then uh, you're pretty much done. You can take it and spoon it into your jar or whatever container you've got uh, and then use the, uh, the juice that you have left over. It's kind of like a jar filler to get a lot of the air out. 
And there you go, uh, really quick and dirty uh, bread and butter pickles. Uh, again, these will uh, keep in your fridge for a couple of weeks or so, uh, but I tend to make these in, in small batches just because they tend to taste a little bit better. That is when I don't want to turn all of those cucumbers into traditional style canned uh, pickles. You can uh, throw this into a water bath canner and do it that way, but there's really no need if you've already kind of cooked them this way. So that works for bread and butter pickles. And finally, dill pickles. So this recipe is kind of in the same spirit of the bread and butter pickles in that it's not a traditional canning recipe. It's just kind of a quick and dirty way to have some uh, dill pickle spears. So the first thing we're gonna do is take our cucumbers and again, remove the ends and cut these instead of into chips. We're gonna cut these into spears. All right, once we've got our cucumber spears all ready to go, we can go ahead and stick these in the jar that they're going to be stored in. Usually it's a good idea to make enough to fill the jar that you're going in, but leave enough room for the brine that we're going to be making. But uh, if you don't have that many cucumbers left over, you can just use what you got. So let's move on to making the brine. All right, so in a medium-sized pot or saucepan, we're going to start by adding two cups of water. This is to create the base layer for the brine for these uh, refrigerator dill pickles. Uh, one cup of distilled white vinegar again. Up next is one tablespoon of salt. Now it's very important that you use actual pickling salt. You can't use regular table salt or iodized salt. It has to be specifically kosher salt uh, or canning pickling salt. Up next is one full tablespoon of dill. It may seem like a lot, but we're using this for uh, a lot of brine. And uh, this brine can actually go for multiple jars depending on the size of your jar. So for this amount of liquid, this seems to work best to make some really uh, flavorful dill pickles. Up next is one half teaspoon of granulated white sugar. And we're also going to add in some more minced garlic, again, from the homemade variety, just a half a teaspoon of that. And then finally, we're going to take some uh, peppercorns out of our pepper grinder here. You can use whatever you want, but this is uh, easy and handy for me to use. So just a few of these, not too many, just four or five, just however many you want to put in there, um, just to add that pepper flavor. All right, once your brine mixture has come to a boil, all you need to do is let it uh, cool down to room temperature uh, just to make sure that you're not putting a hot liquid uh, in with your uh, cold cucumber slices. So once your mixture has uh, cooled down enough, it's as simple as pouring it in the jar with the rest of your cucumbers. Fill it up almost to the top, slap a lid on it, and you're good to go. Now, an important thing to remember about these refrigerator uh, pickles is that you can't eat them right away. Otherwise, they're basically just going to be cucumbers in uh, a brine solution. you got to wait about a week or so, or maybe five or six days, uh, before the brine can soak through them and actually make uh, some nice refrigerator pickles. But uh, once that's happened, uh, you can keep these in the fridge a little bit longer than the uh, other ones because these don't have as high of a sugar content, so they last a little bit longer in the fridge. Some people say up to six months or so, but, but really I'm kind of skeptical about uh, keeping them in the fridge for longer than just, say, a month or two. So really you can just kind of do these in small batches and, and go through them uh, as you make them. So there you go, several recipes to put those spare cucumbers to good use. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.